In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to change your outdated kitchen cabinets or bathroom vanities into a beautiful, shabby chic look. My name is Jenny Lynn, creator of Fusion Mineral Paints. Join and follow along. Updating your kitchen cabinets or bathroom vanities is a really inexpensive, quick fix to get a whole new look to your style in your house. I grabbed this cabinet from Ikea and it was sort of a, a gray mid-tone color and it's a laminate cabinet. So the number one step that you want to do when you're working with kitchen cabinets or bathroom vanities is make sure you clean them. Cleaning is so important. So you want to take our TSP and give them a good wash down and make sure there's no grease on them whatsoever. Once they're completely dry, then you're going to go on to your first step. The first step we are going to be using chocolate. The reason that I chose chocolate is because when I do my shabby chic distressing, I like to always distress down to an old looking wood. So the color that it was before, that sort of modern style gray, if I were to sand down to that gray, it wouldn't look like an old vintage shabby chic look. So I'm kind of faking it, making it look like I had an older wood on there before. So I applied two coats of chocolate and I let four hours in between for dry time. Now that was done about eight to 12 hours ago. So I'm gonna go ahead with my next step. One of my favorite tips and tricks for getting that rustic shabby chic look is using a wax as a resist. Now this is our beeswax finish and this one is completely natural. I'm just gonna use my finger and I'm gonna rub a little bit along some of the edges here. And anywhere that I put this wax, the paint is not going to adhere. So this is just a resist technique. You can go as light or as heavy with this as you want. You want to see it on there. Anywhere that you apply this, the paint will not stick on top of it. Any kind of detailing like this too, I tend to like to highlight that a little bit. There we go. And I really like to make sure I get my edges heavier around the edges because that's where you would have a lot more natural wear and tear. Now, if I knew where my handle was, I would also put a fair bit of this around the handle because again, that's where you're going to naturally have wear and tear. There we go. Again, the more that you apply of this, the less the paint is going to adhere to it. I don't tend to put anything in the middle sections because I find that you won't naturally get wear and tear there. So just be mindful of where you would naturally have the wear and then apply the wax in those areas. I'm gonna put this away. Now onto our next step. I'm going to be using raw silk. Raw silk is by far my absolute favorite shabby chic cottage country kitchen color. This is gonna be a color that works with every color of wall color you have, decor style, it just works and goes. <laughs> so my favorite brush for working on kitchen cabinets that have a shaker style is our beautiful angled synthetic bristle brush. This is fabulous for a couple of reasons, especially if you're a novice painter. This is really excellent because you're not gonna have too much paint on this brush. It doesn't hold too much and it tapers out really nicely at the end, which means that you can get into those corners very nicely and very smoothly. If you notice between coats that you've gotten a few brush strokes, you can always do a light sanding just to remove some of those. But because we're going for a more rustic, shabby chic look, I'm actually very happy with some of these brush strokes that I created. So we're gonna dip in here. And what I love about this color is that it has really amazing coverage. Again, that's one of the reasons why raw silk is my go-to color. Now, when you're first getting started in here, you can be a little heavier with the paint around the inside edges, and then you can come back afterwards and smooth it all out. You've got a good minute or two to, to that, for that to happen. There we go. And eat already. You can see here the paint is 
sort of not adhering to those areas where we had applied the wax. That's exactly what we want because again, we're going for a super shabby, chic, rustic look. This is a really great technique for anyone that is new to painting because that way you don't have to worry about your brush strokes not being perfect and the color being completely consistent and even. It's very forgiving that way. All right, now if you have any excess on your brush, you can sort of get rid of it again back into the container. I also like to pour my paint out and work out of another container sometimes because you don't want to contaminate with the wax or anything else going back into the paint. So there's my first coat. I'm just gonna let that sit and dry and I may do a second coat on it, but I might just leave it. We'll have to see how, how I like the look of it and the coverage. So let's come back once it's had a chance to dry. So just to recap, this is our shabby chic look. And I did end up putting on two coats of the raw silk because I really wanted to have just a little bit more coverage. So we started off with this sort of gray modern base and I went ahead and I applied chocolate because when I sand through, I want to go right down to the chocolate. We went ahead and we put a resist technique on. So here where you can see the paint not adhering very well, that is where the beeswax was sitting. And when we put the coats of paint on, it just wouldn't adhere. It's exactly what we're going for. Now, the last and final step for this one is going to be a little bit of distressing. And then we're gonna talk about top coats. So to easily distress, I do like to introduce a little bit of water to it. So I give a little bit of a spray all over. And then I'm just taking a really light sanding sponge. And I'm not gonna apply very much pressure because you won't need much pressure here where we had that wax. See how it comes off really super easy. What is so important to have around is a spare cloth or some paper towel to wipe away to see exactly how much of that paint you are removing. Now for the rustic shabby chic look, I'm gonna go and do some heavier distressing all over because I really want it to look extra worn. The key is just not to apply too much pressure at once so you don't remove too much. There we go. It also, when you do a little wet distressing, it also makes it really smooth. It feels really great. See the paint that's coming off with the wet distressing. There we go, look at that. See how beautiful that is? Let's get into the middle here. I don't typically do the middle areas, but because we're going for a heavier distressed look, I'm gonna do a little bit. Get into the corners and the edges. I always like to highlight these areas with a little bit of distressing there. There we go. So I've Finished my distressing. I'm really happy with how much I've achieved here, but you can see I've really heavily distressed. So if you've done a lot of distressing, sometimes it's not a bad idea to think about adding a top coat, especially because this is going to be a kitchen or a bathroom vanity that's gonna see a lot of wear and tear and potentially a lot of water, a lot of scrubbing. So I do recommend when you're working on a light color that you use our water-based clear coat tough coat. It is a non-yellowing tough coat and that is why you want to use it on light colors. So the most important thing with this is you want to give it a good stir around. You don't want to shake it but this is a beautiful matte sheen and what happens is all of the matting agent can settle towards the bottom. So give it a nice good stir around maybe for a minute or so and you can even just let the bottle sit upside down while you're prepping and getting ready. The best tool for applying this 
is our, just a sponge. It's basically a washing car sponge and it has a lot of really small areas that the, the tough coat can absorb into. So you're not gonna see brush strokes or inconsistency. Now I'm going to apply the tough coat right into the sponge and really work it in. You may have to apply it to your surface and then work it in, totally fine. You might get a couple of bubbles at the very beginning, but then you'll be able to work those out and through. So you're just going to simply drag along and apply a clear coat. Oopsies. And you just need to do this one coat and then you're done. Make sure you get into all the corners and the edges. And that's it. It's really that simple. So you want to let that dry for about um, 12 hours or so before you start using it. And for the first 30 days while the paint is curing, you want to be gentle with it. So you can definitely still use your kitchen cabinets. But just remember, no heavy abrasive cleaners during that time while it is becoming completely solid cured and waterproof. This is a really great look for your cottages or if you want to give your home a real rustic feel. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial.